Makoto Katoa, welcome in to Sky Rugby Club. We've gone digital. We're not allowed in the studio at the moment, but the boys here, the boys are both here. Joey Wheeler, Israel Dag, how are you two this week? We're good. We're good. We're good. Yeah, we're freedom. We're level three. We've been here for a while now, but no, we're good, Kirsty. I'm happy for my Auckland friends. They get to taste a bit of level three takeaways 1.0. So happiness. You're happy because you got a bit of, bit of a takeaway buzz tonight. <laughs> Not yet, it's coming, and I'm excited for my McDonald's. Yeah, enjoy that, Kirst, enjoy that. <laughs> That's what comes with Level 3. The rest of you, you're in Level 2, so congratulations. Um, But we're going to get stuck into it. We're going to do this every week. We're going to debate the hottest topics in rugby at the moment. And while the biggest game, I would say, of the last couple of years, we haven't played South Africa since the 2019 Rugby World yes. Cup, and this, this is a special one. It's the centenary, the 100th game, so... Uh, for both of you, this rivalry between the All Blacks and South Africa, is this the greatest rivalry in rugby? I would think so, Kirst. I think the, the tradition, obviously, um, that this, these two teams have between each other, obviously dating back 100 years. And, and it's a shame um, for, for my hometown, Ortipoti, that we can't host it because uh, that was mm. where it was first played down here in Carisbrook. But I, I just I, I love um, the passion that, that both these nations have for their for their national rugby side, and I think that's why there's such such a rivalry between the two of them. Obviously, pretty contrasting in terms of styles of play, but I think it's just the passion that those jerseys are held in amongst not only the players but also the the whole country. That the, the country stop when those two teams play, and and it and it's got such a rich history in terms of the closeness of battles. The the dominance that have been uh, flipping over the years, it's uh, its just something uh, so, so special. And we all get so excited about um, those test matches. And, and Izzy, you've been lucky enough to play in a couple of doozies. And I'd imagine that alongside the Bledisloe, um, this team is, is probably the toughest and the one that you look forward to the most every year. Yeah, mate, you, I totally, totally agree with what you just said. Like physically and mentally, I always knew that I had to be right up in this game. They always tested you, tested you physically, but also in my position, we always knew that there was going to be a barrage of high balls coming our way because that is a big part of their identity and how they play the game. They always test you at the back. So for me personally, I always knew I had to be right on my right on my game, right on the money with preparation, uh, physically, mentally leading into that game. I couldn't take any shortcuts because I knew it was going to you take it full noise or you're going to put on put on an absolute mare out there so for me it was the toughest and it is probably the greatest rivalry for all blacks um you know we always love playing our wallaby neighbors but physically and mentally like i've just said you always knew that this was going to be a tough battle and today i got to do a little collation of of who are my greatest spring box of all time and and i've just gone through a few names and it just shows you like the, the caliber of players that we've uh, been able to watch from a Springboks point of uh, perspective. I went through names like Jus van der Westhuizen, the greatest halfback. He'll be in the names of go down as one of the greatest halfbacks of all time. He died at a young age, 45 years old, played 83 tests. Someone that just defined his game, he was, his life was cut short, but um, just the way he played, he was courageous uh, on defense and attack. And then you look at a guy, Francois Pina. He only played for three years, 93 to 96, but what he was able to do off the field was, was a big part. He was able to shape um, South Africa, the identity that they live now, the, the apartheid um, way that they are. He brought a nation together. And I guess as a Kiwi, uh, looking in at that 95 World Cup, we hated losing. We hated losing to the Springboks, but you put that aside, what it did for the South African nation, that's what I that's what I love about it. So, mate, um, this 100th years, yeah, 100th test match this weekend, I'm pumped, I'm excited, I can't wait for the lads to rip in. And we look at previous results, yes, you can take a lot out of it, but this weekend, totally nothing matters. The Springboks will be up, they'll be physical, they'll be ready to put on a clinic against the All Blacks. Joey, is this contest um, as big as it could have been considering the results over the last couple of weeks for the world champions? Um, yeah, I think as you alluded to, I, I think you, you take form, past form out of it with, with the Springboks. We always know that when it comes to the All Blacks, they always front and they're not going to go away from what they do really, really well. I, I, a lot of people were saying they're out of form at the moment. I, I don't attest to that. I think I'm not used to the style of play that 
especially the Aussies have thrown at them where they're using the ball, trying to run them off their feet. <clears throat> they came up against a, a Lions outfit. They've just come off a Lions series. They've played two tests against Argentina before coming over to Australia. So to say they're out of form, I think it's a little bit far-fetched. I just think their style of play, that slow, suffocating style, mm. if you can defuse their aerial game and their mall game and their uh, brutality at the breakdown and you can recycle ball, then I, I believe you can run these guys off their feet. And I think that's where they haven't quite got their balance right that we saw in the World Cup. I think their kicking game was a lot more accurate in the World Cup, and that's where they got a lot of pay. They they kicked really well. They turned teams over, and then they used the ball. They used the likes of Willie LaRue and Henri Pollard attacking the line. But we just haven't seen that from the South African side. And I'd expect to see a little bit more of that this weekend because they just aren't getting the results. And I think if the All Blacks can diffuse uh, their, their aerial game and their and their brutality at the breakdown, then I believe the All Blacks are going to be too good just because of their skill across the park from, from 1 to 23. I think they're going to be far superior uh, than the Springboks. Well, another thing uh, we have to talk about, that's going to be massive, the 100th game. But what about the starting combinations? Um, let's say everyone for the All Blacks is fit and available who are the best two current locks? Who would you pick as your two starters at four and five? When you think about the names that you've got, obviously the incumbents like a Sam Whitelock and Brody Retallick, but Tupo Vai, obviously an up-and-comer. Scott Barrett, he's proven what he can do at this level. And you've got Paddy in there as well. Um, for you first, Joey, who would you pick? Who are your starters? Gee, it's, it's an embarrassment of riches, isn't it, when, you, when you're listing off all those players cursed. Um, just so blessed to have, you know, basically five world-class locks uh, to pick from. And I think we were probably a little bit nervous about Brody's form when he first came back from Japan. He was he was obviously fit as, but he was probably a little bit um, thinner and skinnier than uh, we we're used to seeing Brody, and he didn't have that physical edge that, that we were so accustomed to. And in um, those Fiji tests probably wasn't, where he was, but uh, where, where we're used to seeing him. But now he is back to his world class best. So, Scott, uh, sorry, Brody Retallick for me is a certainty. In the other one, in the other, the other lock, this is this is unbelievable that we're even questioning this because you think Sam Whitelock, 120 Test legend of the game, uh, All Black captain at the moment, and we're actually questioning his selection in the side where him and him and Brody were just always a certainty, and and I think that's because of the fact that Scott Barrett's got his chance now over in Australia and he's played so, so well. He's taken them with both hands. I think some of the work he's been doing, which has impressed me the most, is his work on attack and his ball carry. Uh, I just had a look at some stats before we came on here and he's averaging sort of nine carries a game and with every one of those carries, he's making a game line of over a metre. So that's huge through the middle of a field for a big man to be that involved. But the, the part of the game that I love that I think he... He adds alongside Brody, which Brody does so well, is the variety in their attack. The ability to tip to the guy outside him or inside him, or the ability to offload as well. So for me at the moment, and even Tupuvaya, his performance last week was outstanding, but for me, I'm going to lock in uh, Brody and Scott Barrett um, for, for my two locks that are in form at the moment. Um, curse, just purely wow. for the fact that I think on attack, Scott's just bringing a little bit more than Sam, and I can't believe that I'm actually doing that. <laughs> <laughs> You're featuring because... Sam Whitelock. I'm going to say that there no, is no, no way a one eye can tap's going to do that, is he? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, that's the thing. That's the thing. Sammy's not there. So Sammy's out of the picture. He's back in NZ. So, look, he, he's not even a part of my conversation. When he comes back, he's he's straight in there for me. He's straight in there for me. Him and Brody Retallick have formed this formidable uh, locking combination, world class, and we're so lucky. But he's not there at you the did, moment, and I love Remember, this is, this is everyone's available, mate. It's not it's not present. Everyone's available. Everyone's available. Everyone's You're available. picking your world class starting team Everyone's available. Right. Well, Stop he's not available. He's not available, Joe, uh, Joe Wheeler. He's over here in New Zealand. He's looking after his new kids. So he's not available. But if he was available, I'd go Sammy Whitelock and Guzzler. Oh, there okay? we go. There we go. There we go. No, honestly, I just... Look, I, I, I'll talk about Tupo Vai because I was so impressed with um, him on the weekend. I think his work around the park, he's so skillful. And his initiative and his instinctiveness to know where to be out on the park, he just knows how to play rugby. And I think his core roles within the line-out scrummaging is all up to scratch. I don't know much about bloody line-outs. You know a lot more than me. But from what I can see, the outside looking in, 
I love what Tupo Vai was about. I can understand where you've seen Scott Barrett. He is coming back into a bit of form. Um, he's making better decisions. His tackle technique has uh, come a long way. We've got to understand he made a, a few little errors there and cost the All Blacks and discipline-wise last year. But I, I totally agree. But if it was for me, Sammy Whitelock, if he was there, it'll be Sammy and Gaza. They've played the um, Springboks a lot of times. And physic, like just ha having to go to a dark place, you'd know this, uh, Joe Wheeler. If, when you play South Africa and you're a tight forward, you know what's coming. The battle that's ahead of you, you're going to have to put your head into some dark places. You're going to have to go to some places that no, ever, no, no rugby player has ever been before as a tight five. And I know Sammy Whitelock and Gaza, they love the physicality. They love that area. And I just think um, that, that they just love yeah, love putting their yeah. heads in dark places and being physical. Yeah, touching on that, Dagger, I think th this is the this is the thing. Like with with Sammy obviously being back uh, in New Zealand because of the birth of his third child, th this gives this gives Scott the opportunity to sort of I guess define himself against against the Springbok side. If he can nail these next two Test matches against these guys, the the brutality and the physicality, then he, he's got to be there or thereabouts in terms of that selection argument. Um, against him and him and Sam Whitelock, so I think the challenge is for Scott Barrett now to deliver that against the most physical side in world rugby in the Springboks. And if he can do that, then the selectors have got a real, real tough job. What about a, either pick we haven't even spoke Whitelock about Patrick Tu Pelotu? What about Patrick Tu Pelotu? Like unbelievable as well on the weekend in his return. Like where does he sit in this conversation? Well, that's what we're saying. Five, five world class. Um, all Blacks and world class locks. What a what a problem to have, and it and it does come down to those little one percenters that we we're talking about, and that's why I think Scott for me gets the nod because he does have that little bit of point of difference in terms of his ball carry alongside Guzzler, where he can he's got sort of the the offload game and the tip pass game, and he's making really really good meters when he is carrying into those brick walls. But like you alluded to, the spring box is a whole nother challenge, a whole nother physical challenge. The brutality they bring through the middle of the field, the line speed they bring, the in your face, the little elbows on the ground, all that, all those little things are going to be a massive challenge for Scott Barrett. But if he can rise to that, which I'm sure he's going to, and take his game to that next level, then I think him and him and um, Guzzler are going to form a pretty uh, outstanding combination going into this next World Cup. Hey, what what does Sammy do to you? I think he's done something to you in training in that 2011 year when you were here, mate. What do he do? What do he do? Spill the beans. <laughs> no, it was all those. It was all those Super Rugby games we played against each other, and he used to gra rip my headgear off. <laughs> no, I, like go. this is the thing, right? Sam Wallet, world class. So unbelievable, and I can't believe we're even having this conversation. But that, that's that's the beauty of this All Black side at the moment. There's there's just selection issues across the park, and it, and it's a fantastic problem to have, right? Yeah. Good on you for being honest, Joey. We love it, and I love this battle going on between you two as well. You know that things are getting heated when Izzy keeps calling you by your first and last name, <laughs> Joey. <laughs> Joe Wheeler, Joe Joseph. <laughs> Let's move on to the back, though, those guys that are going to be diffusing bombs. Uh, same thing. If everyone is fit and available, who do you have starting at fullback? Do you go Geordie Barrett? Do you go Damien McKenzie? Or do you go someone else? I'd, I'd go Geordie Barrett. No questions asked, mate. He is playing well. He is he, Like, for me, he's big. He's a big unit. And you watch the lines. Like, on the weekend, there was nothing on out left. There was no no player. What does Jordy do? Because he's played number 12, he runs a short line off D-Mac just to set up a ruck in the midfield. There's nothing on. He's brave. He's brave. He's making good decisions at the back. He knows when to run. He's got a, he's got a big monstrous boot that will have to um, you know come into fruition this weekend when he plays against the Springboks. So, for me, and his ability to um, defuse those high ball kicks, uh, that, that's, for me, that just what sets him apart. He is going to be tested this weekend against the Springboks. We saw Andre Pollard after a few rucks. They get a bit lost. He just gets back in the pocket, puts a crossfield kick up. Geordie Barrett will eat those up all day. So, for me, Geordie Barrett is the fullback. He is the starting fullback. He is our fullback for the future. So, Geordie Barrett for me. Joey, what about yourself? Yeah, I'm the I'm the same actually against the Springbok side. I just think because of their their threat with their their box kicking ability and their high balls and their reliance that they put on that, I think Geordie is the best equipped to defuse those situations just because he's six foot six, um, mm. brilliant in the air, fearless, um, a real competitor. But the point of difference for me is the ability to kick the nut off the tee from sort of sixty to sixty five meters 
could be the difference in these um, in these tight tussles. So that's the reason for me, um, Geordie gets the nod in the 15 jersey. But Damien McKenzie, the, the problem with Damo, he's playing so, so well, and he does it whenever he comes off the bench or whether he starts, he's in world-class form. And I think his best impact against the Springbok side is going to be in that last sort of 30 to 25 minutes of the game when they're tiring and they're trying to play that long kicking game uh, still and then the All Blacks look to take off and run them off the park. And that's where Damian McKenzie's at his most dangerous and that's where I'd like to see them use him, use him this weekend. But again, what a problem to have two guys that are in world-class form at the moment. And, so you wouldn't uh, have Richie there? What's that? So you wouldn't have Richie there. Everyone's up for selection, Joey. Everyone's up for selection. Well, yeah, well, if, if, Richie, if Richie's fit and available, Richie starts in, in the 10 jersey. And Bodie's not on the bench? <laughs> you know, that, that's the other problem, isn't it? That <laughs> Bodie, goes to the bench. Bodie probably goes to the bench for me and Damien drops out, unfortunately. But, yeah, far out. What an issue to have. To have the the good world player of the year on the bench. It is, a, it is an unbelievable issue issue to have and and that's that's the thing like richie's obviously got a couple more days and he gets out of isolation but I, i've really enjoyed damien at, at playing at 10 i'll be honest like um I, I feel like that is his position his passing game his vision his kicking his direction around the park and if he does spot a half gap he's got that skill set to beat players he's brave on defense um so like I've, I've really enjoyed seeing Damien get a lot more time in the 10 position and the 10 jersey I just fullback we know what he you know if he gets time his face he is unbelievable he's a game breaker but I just think that high ball just that smaller stature um he's very brave don't get me wrong but just getting up and, and containing that air is is probably just a, sets him apart from Geordie Barrett there but really enjoying Damien playing a bit of 10 and getting some game time well, keep the debate going at home. I'm sure these two are going to keep the debate going, whether it's on the WhatsApp group or uh, over the phone. But keep it going and comment also. Uh, who do you think should be the starting lots and who do you think should be the starting 15 for the All Blacks when everyone is fit and available? Would love to go back and read those comments as well. Thank you guys so much. And thank you also for joining us at home or wherever you are today. This is Sky Rugby Club.